Hi there, thank you for tuning in today. I'm standing on the building site of our brand new church facility. Believe it or not, this is going to be the fifth building that this church has occupied during the past 117 years. Yes, you heard correctly, 117 years. And if you want to be part of this exciting story, I want to invite you to contribute financially. If you decide to do so, we'll greatly appreciate it. But enjoy the rest of the service with us now. I want to talk to you today and, and possibly for the next couple of weeks just about the power of our words. You know, there are millions of, of words written down in books and magazines and newspapers and internet articles. And those are just normal words. But then when you turn to this book, <laughs> you'll find so many words in here. And they look exactly the same as all those other words. They are spelt the same. They even sound the same. But let me tell you, they are not the same at all. Because these are God's words. Listen to what Jesus said about these. He says, the words I've spoken to you are spirit. So in other words, they're not just normal. They are spirit and they are life. Solomon put it this way. Solomon said, they are life to those who find them and health to a man's whole body. The writer to the Hebrews put it like this. He says, for the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. And so even though these words may look exactly the same and spelt the same and sound the same, they are different because they are God's words. Paul says to Timothy, he says, he says they are God breathed. And that's why these words are so powerful because it's God's word to you and me. I think the Bible is probably one of the most precious gifts God has given us on this earth, together with the Holy Spirit. One of the most precious, precious gifts. And so in this, you will find truths about who you are and what you have in Christ. You'll find direction for life's uh, complexities and wisdom to help guide through all the various decisions that you've got to make. You'll find answers there to life's most complex questions. We find answers. But also what we find here in the Word is power. There's power in here when you and I learn to speak God's Word, to declare God's Word. And that's what I want to quickly share with you this morning, is the power of our words, but not just normal words, when we start taking God's words and, and, and we start declaring those words. I want to show you what happens when we do that. Somebody once said, store up God's word in your heart when you don't need it. And you will have it <laughs> when you need it. You'll have it when you need it. I think every single day, you and I face opportunities where we need God's word on the inside. The power of, of God's word. And so when you're facing trouble, that's an opportunity to speak God's word and to say something like, greater is he who's in me than he who's in the world. Doesn't matter what I'm facing, God's power in me is greater than anything else that I may face. When you're facing fear, for instance, start declaring his word. The Lord is, the light, is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? What about when you feel lonely? You feel abandoned. <laughs> you just speak out. God, you've promised you'll never leave me nor forsake me. That's your promise. And so when you do that, you find you start releasing through, through your words. 
you start releasing God's power into your life and into the, the spiritual realm. You see, the Bible teaches us that we are constantly involved in a spiritual battle. Some people don't even realize this, but because we can't see it, but there's a spiritual battle going on for your life, for my life, for your loved ones, for your success, for your faith. And, 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 the, and the, one, the, the, the one who's against us is Satan, is the devil. The Bible tells us that he's come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And so the Bible actually warns us about him. It says, hey, you've got an enemy and he's come to steal, kill, and destroy. Where do we find that? John 10 verse 9. 10, 10 says he's come to give us life and give it to us abundantly. The previous verse 10, 9 warns us that you've got an enemy. But don't fear, all right? Even though you've got an enemy, there's good news coming. Luke 10 verse 19 tells us that God has given us authority over the power of the enemy. And, and this is a verse you've got to memorize. This is the verse you've got to know. And it's easy to remember, by the way, if you want to remember the reference, because John 10, 9, remember this, 10, 9, tells us that he's come to steal, kill, and destroy. Luke 10, 19 gives us the antidote to that, all right? Gives us authority, tells us that we have authority over the enemy, over the power of the enemy. So you don't have to fear that. God has given us authority. Now listen to this. Not only has he given us authority, but he's also given us the weapons to fight it. So if you're taking notes, you write down authority, weapons. I, I would suggest you circle both of those words. Second Corinthians 10, 4, the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of this world. On the contrary, they have divine power. So in other words, what he's saying is the weapons God's given us are supernatural. They have divine power to demolish strongholds. What strongholds? The strongholds of the enemy. And so the most powerful weapon that God has given you and me, together with our faith, by the way, is his word right here. This is what he's given us. It's the sword of the Spirit. That's the weapon that we have. We've just seen that it's living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword. So that's our weapon. And when we start using this weapon, when we start declaring God's Word, nothing and no one is able to stand against this. And Jesus understood the power of God's word. You can see it in the wilderness when the enemy comes against him and wants to try and mess, mess him up right there. Before his ministry really starts, the enemy realizes, I've, I've got to get him now. And so he comes, and what does Jesus do? He quotes scripture. He doesn't argue with the devil. He just simply quotes scripture three times. Then after that wilderness experience, Jesus went to his hometown, Nazareth, and on the Sabbath day, went into the synagogue. The Bible says, as was his custom, like you guys, as was your custom, you came to church on a Sunday, came to Maranatha. And so Jesus had the same custom, by the way, good habit to have. And so he goes to, he goes to the synagogue. He stands up to read. And the, the attendant came over. Remember, they didn't have Bibles back then. The attendant came over with a scroll, and this time the scroll of Isaiah, and hands it to him. And he unrolls the scroll, probably with the help of the attendant. they unrolling it to the place that you and I today, today know as Isaiah chapter 61. Now, they didn't have chapters and verses back then. It was just, it, 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 they didn't have anything. That was only added about 1,200 years after uh, uh, Jesus died. As a matter of fact, to be exact, 1227, they added verses and, and, and chapters just to make it easy for you and me to remember. And so Jesus unrolls the scroll and he starts reading. Now, now just imagine this. He stands up and he's reading something that was prophesied 700 years before 
by the prophet Isaiah, and he reads, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to, receive, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And that there became known as Jesus' first sermon. Very short sermon, by the way. But that was his first sermon. And then he handed the scroll back. And he went and sat down. And the Bible says every single eye was upon Jesus. They looked at him intently. There was just something about that moment that people couldn't understand. And when he had their full attention... He dropped the bombshell and he said, Today, this, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing or in your midst. <laughs> like, wow, how incredible was that moment. And I think for most of the people there, they probably didn't even realize just how powerful that moment was. Scripture had been fulfilled, that had been prophesied 700 years before, had been fulfilled in their, in their very midst. And Jesus was basically saying, now this is it. He was saying, I am what Scripture says I am. He was getting into agreement with God. You see, by speaking that out, he was agreeing with God. And I think it's probably one of the smartest, one of the most powerful things that you and I can do is to get into agreement with God. And do you know this is exactly what John the Baptist did? When they came to him and they said, are you the Christ? He said, no, 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 I'm not the Christ. He said, well, are you Elijah then? No, 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 I'm not Elijah. Well, are you a prophet? No, man. Hey, well, who are you then? Please tell us so we can go back to, and report to those who've sent us. And he did exactly what Jesus did. He quoted scripture. Listen to this. He says, I am the voice of the one calling in the desert. Make straight the way for the Lord. And, and right there, he's basically quoting Isaiah chapter 40. It's recorded for us in John chapter 1, but he's quoting Isaiah chapter 40. And so what is he doing? He's simply stating, I am what Scripture says I am. He was getting into agreement with God, and I believe this is what God wants you and me to do. is just to start looking at Scripture and find places that talk about you and me as believers and promises and, and statements that God makes and to get into agreement with us and to start speaking that over our lives. It's one of the smartest things we can do. Now, speaking God's word, you've got to understand it's a spiritual law. And if you don't believe that, just try it in reverse and you'll see, <laughs> you'll see what happens. Most people do it in any case and they get sick, for instance, and what do they do? They start speaking negative. Oh, you know, I'm, I'm sick again, and I can just feel this thing is just getting worse. I think this cold has really set in, and you know, before I know it, I'll probably have pneumonia and end up in a hospital like all the other times. You better get ready to go and visit them in hospital, because that's exactly where they're going. Why? Because they believe that, and they speak that, and they're going to experience that. And so just as much as this law works in the reverse, when, 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 when you do it the other way around, when you start speaking God's word, you'll see those promises being fulfilled in your life. Jeremiah 1 verse 12 says, listen to what God says. And, and again, this is such a powerful verse. He says, for I'm watching to see that my word is fulfilled. That's why we call it the spiritual law. Because he's saying, he's saying I, I, I'm, wa I'm watching, I'm waiting. I'm not a God that I should lie. He says, I'm watching to see that it's fulfilled, but I'm waiting for my children to get into agreement and, and to start speaking that and start believing that and start living that, and it'll be fulfilled in, in their lives. I mean, this is such a powerful verse. 
In James chapter 3, James uh, compares the, the tongue to, to a rudder of a ship. And just like the rudder of a ship can, can d- change the direction of that huge big ship, he says in the same way, your tongue can change and direct the, the direction of your life, where you're going with your life. I, I wonder how many times we've used careless words. Come on, we all have. We've said careless things over ourselves and our family. And then we stand back and we can't understand why this stuff is happening. And some people, when they open their mouth, they're negative. Negative about the country, negative about this, negative about their own children, negative about... And, and then they can't understand why everything in their lives is just, just negative. Listen, you're not going to live a positive life when, when it, all you're saying is negative. You're not going to experience victory and success when you're speaking defeat and failure and negativity all the time. We've got, to, we've got to learn to use our words correctly. Don't use your words to describe your situation. Use your words to change your situation. That's how powerful our words are. Now, just a warning, though. Just because you start speaking the right thing, you start speaking God's word, doesn't mean that it's just going to change instantaneously like that. We all know victory uh, uh, happens gradually. It comes over, over time. And so this is where you and I have got to be patient and stay in faith. Even though nothing changes, stay patient, stay in faith, and just keep declaring God's word. It's, it's like sowing seed. You don't sow a seed and immediately it germinates, grows like Jack in the beanstalk (laughs) and start producing fruit. No, man, that's a fairy tale, all right? We know real seed takes time to germinate and to bear fruit. But here's the thing. It will produce what God's purpose that seed to produce because God created it. When God says it, it will produce what He's purposed for this seed to produce when you and I start speaking it. But sometimes we've just got to be patient and we've got to wait for it. Don't don't try and rush it. Now, when, when you start speaking God's Word, you'll find something happens on the inside. What is that? It starts building your faith. Your faith starts coming alive. If, if you never speak God's word, <laughs> nothing happens to your faith. But the moment you start looking at what this is, and you start declaring that, it builds your faith. It becomes stronger and stronger on the inside. And, and I think I'm, I'm just kind of looking into the spiritual realm as it were. I think... That's where the enemy stands back. He's like, whoa, 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 what happened there? You know, he's changed. She's changed. You know, she's so much more powerful than what she was a week or two ago. And God says, yes, she's been to Maranatha. (laughs) That's my child. (laughs) And she's been declaring my word. Amen. (laughs) And so that's what happens when you and I start declaring God's word. Now, one of the things that caused you and me to say the wrong thing is fear. Think about it. You know, when, when, when we're fearful and anxious on the inside, what do we do? We speak death, man. We start saying things like, oh, I don't know if we're ever going to get out of this. I don't know if, if I'll ever find a job. I don't know if I'll ever. And, and so what are we doing? We're speaking death. Because, because there's fear deep down in our hearts. And we've got to realize fear is faith in reverse. God uses our faith. Oh, enemy uses our fear. As a matter of fact, he loves our fear because that keeps us from moving down the lane that God wants, the faith lane, the miracle lane, but that requires faith. And so God uses faith. The enemy uses fear. Can you see how important it is for us? Don't go down that road. Don't even come close to that road. There's there's such a powerful principle here in Job chapter 3. Look at this. Job says, the thing I greatly feared came upon me. 
And that which I was afraid of has happened to me. And so what's happening here? He's walking around saying to himself, you know, what if this happens? What if that happens? And so what, what is he doing? He's activating that stuff in his life. And before he knows it, those very things start going wrong. The very stuff he feared came upon him. We have the scripture in the Bible to warn you and me. Don't go down that same road. So can I ask you this morning, <laughs> what is coming out of your mouth? Is it faith or is it fear? What, what are you constantly saying? What are you meditating on? Are you meditating on God's word and some of the promises and some of the things God has said, even though you haven't experienced it yet? Or are you meditating on what the enemy is saying? What if this happens? And what, what if that happens? Because whatever it is you, you, you speaking, whatever it is you meditating on, you're going to see more of that in your life. Be careful. You cannot think negative thoughts and then expect to live a positive life. It doesn't work like that. Now, there's an account in the Bible that's interesting. Where God goes to Jeremiah. Now, at this stage, Jeremiah was just a young, young man, 17 years old. And God goes to him, and God says to him, I've set you apart and anointed you to be the next prophet. And Jeremiah almost has a little heart attack. <laughs> it's like some of the scriptures you and I read in the Bible is like, I don't know how this is ever going to come true in my life. And, and that's basically how he felt. And, and so he says to God, he says, he says but I'm just a child. I'm just a lighty. That's what he was saying to God. And God says to him, do not say, I'm only a child. Don't say that. Don't speak that out. Don't, don't release, declare the wrong stuff over your life. You see, Proverbs chapter 6 tells us, you are snared by the words of your mouth. What does it mean to be snared? It's not a word that we often use in English these days. It's a trap. It's a trap. You're trapped. Now, when, when something, an animal is trapped, does it have freedom to roam around? No, there's no freedom. Can it step into the future? No, nothing. Because it's trapped. It's held back. And so what Scripture is teaching us here, our own words can hold us back, can trap us into the things the devil wants for our lives and not the things that God wants for our lives. Now, so often when you and I face problems and challenges, one of the first things we do is we pray about it. Oh, hopefully we do, all right? We pray about it. And that's good. We need to pray. Scripture teaches us to do that. But together with that, we need to say the right thing. It's not just about praying, it's about saying. Because some people will pray in this direction, and then they'll speak the other stuff. God, please, you've got to bring a breakthrough in my life. I can't see how we're ever going to have a breakthrough. Can you see what's, what we're doing? They're not going together. Joel chapter 3 says, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I'm going to win the lottery. All right? <laughs> no, you didn't hear that in church. <laughs> but if you do remember to tithe. All right, now I'm just joking. We've got a building fund. All right, now I'm just joking. And so it's important for us to not only pray, but also to say, to speak out the, the, the right thing. Remember the lady with the issue of blood? She said to herself, here it is, if only I touch his cloak, I will get well. She said to herself. What did David say when he faced Goliath? Let's have a look at that. This day the Lord will hand you over to me. What do they have in common? 
Come and think about it. What do they have in common? They're speaking victory. They're speaking success before they're even there. It hasn't happened. She's not healed yet. He hasn't overcome Goliath. But he's already speaking victory. He's already going down the right, right road. Can you see how important it is? And so with your words, you can speak life or you can speak death. You decide. You can bless your future or you can curse your future. You can create a way forward for yourself, open a way up, or you can trap yourself, hold yourself back. You can change your life if you change the way that you speak over yourself. And so one of the best habits I think that you and I can develop is just start getting into God's Word and just start seeing what does God's Word say and start speaking this over your life, over your business, over your career, over your marriage, over your finances. Start speaking God's Word. One of the best things that we can do. And so if, for instance, you're battling with fear today, Speak God's word. What about Psalm 23? Such a well-known psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Can you see that declaration? I will fear no evil. I'm not going to give in to fear. Isaiah 41 says, do not fear. And here's the promise. For I am with you. Do not be dismayed. He has another promise for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And so that's where you and I need to come before God and say, God, you've promised that you'll never leave me nor forsake me. You are my God. And you've promised that you'll strengthen me, help me, uphold me with your righteous right hand. God, I'm not going to give in to fear. Not a chance. I'm trusting you because you said this. And so I'm, I'm just asking us this morning, let's quit saying negative things, speaking the wrong things over ourselves, and let's start speaking God's word. Let's quit magnifying the problem. Oh man, this thing is so big, and I don't know. Don't magnify the problem. Start magnifying your God. You know, God's bigger than anything that I face. I can do all things through Christ to strengthen me magnify God. And when you do that, you'll find your problems become smaller because you're focusing on, on God. So let me close with this last verse quickly this morning. And again, this one's powerful. I know I keep on saying this is powerful. This is powerful because the scripture is powerful. All right. So listen to this one. In Joshua 1 verse 8, he's about to go into the promised land and God says to him, he says, now, do not let this book of the law depart from your, your mouth. Your mouth. He says, he says, you've got to speak this. And then he says, meditate on it day and night. So in other words, you've got to know it. Get into it. So that you may be careful to do everything written in it. What is that? Obedience. So he's given us three instructions here already. He says, then you'll be prosperous and successful. Now, let's just go back there. What are the three instructions? He says, you've got to know it. You've got to obey it. And that's where we sometimes stop. You've got to say it. He says, get, get, get the word on the inside of you. Meditate on it. Know it. He says, and be careful to do as it says. So obey the word. Don't be casual about it. He says, but you've got to start speaking. He says, and if you'll do those three things, that's what he tells us to do, three things. Know it, obey it, and say it. He says, you will be prosperous and successful. You want life to work, then follow those, those three things. And so I just want to encourage you this morning. Get into God's Word. Get into God's Word. If you'll store it in your heart when you don't need it, <laughs> you'll have it when you need it. And so don't be casual. You know, we spend so much time on social media. Think about it. You know, we've got a moment. You open the phone quickly. You know, and it can be on various apps. If we are to just, just go to the Bible app and just go to the Scripture, I'd recommend just take one Scripture a week. Come on. 
one scripture a week. At the end of the year, you've just added 50 odd scriptures to your, 50, 52 scriptures to your, your, your knowledge. One scripture. So if there's one that stood out, and, and I would recommend, I'll give you an easy one, Luke 10, 19. God's given us authority over all the power of the enemy. Anybody can remember that, even a primary school kid, all right? And so get into Scripture, memorize Scripture. If we'll do that, if we'll get God's, God's Word into our hearts, even when we don't need it, in a week or two's time, suddenly something comes up. Holy Spirit highlights that Word on the inside. You start speaking it over your situation. Guess what happens? God's Word just suddenly gets alive, comes alive in that situation. You start seeing breakthroughs that you'd never have had because you're not using the weapon that God has given us. Come on, let's stand. I want to pray for us. Thank you, Lord, for your precious word. My prayer this morning for every single one of us, and I'm right in the front of this line, Lord, Help us to get into your word. Help us, Lord, to memorize your precious, powerful word and to store it deep within our hearts so that we can use it when we need to. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Bless you.